What's up people this is Vishal and I'm back again with another video and in this one we are going to talk about debouncing and throttling javascript events but before we get into the topic about 67% of you have not subscribed to the channel so please consider subscribing to the channel so that it gives me motivation to bring more content to you now without wasting much time let's go so let's first understand the code that i've written so far so in my js file i have a reference to my search box that is there in my html the width of the search box is set to window dot inner width by three and i have a function uh, called fetch data which is making a dummy api call and uh, logging the response on the console i have two event listeners where one is an event listener on key down on the search box that that is there in the html and uh, on each key down i'm going to make an api call to fetch the data right and i have another event listener which is set to the windows resize and on the window resize basically i'm doing the same thing that i'm doing over here i'm setting the width of the search box equal to uh, the screen width by three so when we execute this it would look like this so we will have we have a search box whose width is equal to uh, screen width by three and uh, on resize so let's hook this to the right so on resize you will see that the width of the search box is growing and shrinking as i read uh, change the size of the window all right and for the key down event whatever i type inside the search box it is going to make an api call so let's say i type my name and you can see there are about six api calls made so this is where the problem comes in uh, the user wanted to search for the name vishal but we ended up making six api calls with uh, v vi as vis and so on until we search for the actual term which user wanted to search so we ended up making some additional api calls which we didn't want and their response is basically something which i wouldn't want at all right because the user is searching for vishal and the data response for that would be coming in the last api call that we have made so this is where the debouncing will come into the picture now with the help of debouncing we will not allow these key down events to make an api call until the user is idle for let's say 300 milliseconds so that uh, we uh, end up only searching for the term which user wanted to search rather than making api call for every key down stroke that uh, the user is making so let's jump into the code now and see how we'll write the debouncing logic so uh, we need a debouncing function so i'll go ahead and create one function called debounce all right and this function is going to take in two parameters so one is going to be the callback function and the amount of time we want to delay before we actually execute the event okay so this is going to be a closure so i'll be defining a variable over here called let's call it timeout okay and this is going to return a function and in this function the first thing i am going to do is write timeout equal to we will use make use of set timeout and what we need to do is uh, in the callback of set timeout we need to execute the function which we are passing so so uh, we have set the timeout of uh, delay variable so whatever the user passes that will be applied over here and we need in this we need to execute the function right and um yeah so uh, now how this will work is whenever we debound something so whenever the event uh, executes this inner function it will set a timeout of some x milliseconds and after that it is going to execute the uh, function but for but we all know that set timeout is going to throw all these um, uh, callback functions inside the callback queue so we need to avoid that to happen we want to push only the event which is supposed to make an api call like which wa which has waited for uh, x millisecond only that event has to uh, be allowed to execute the function so for each keystroke we will also do one thing we will clear the timeout which was set earlier right so in th what this is basically doing is it is clearing the timeout which was set in the pre by the previous event okay so uh, this is all that we need to do with debounce so let's update our event listener to make use of the debounce logic now so in my event listener since this is returning a function i can directly write my debounce here and the debounce function needs a function so we will just pass in our fetch data and let's say i want to wait for 
an idle time of 1000 milliseconds from user that is one second and let's see if uh, it solves our problem now so we head on to our browser again hit a refresh let me clear this up and this time we are going to type in vishl and you can see that there is only one call made after an idle time of one second so after the user entered vishal and waited for one second then that's when the api call was made so this is what debouncing is all about so and it is used a lot in your search uh, on on the websites wherever you have searched right so we don't want to stress our backend with unnecessary api calls hence uh, we would be debouncing these events so that we make the actual call that is needed for the user so let's talk about throttling now to explain throttling i will take a very simple example so let's imagine that uh, you go to your mom and ask for a chocolate she gives you the chocolate once but says that for next 6 hours you are not going to get any chocolate so no matter how many times you request for the chocolate your mom is going to refuse or ignore your request and only give you chocolate after 6 hours okay and the same pattern continues so the same thing happens in throttling as well so we will be catering the first resize event that we get and execute this callback okay but for uh, next x amount of time we are going to ignore the rest of the resize events and only uh, execute the callback again after x amount of time has passed since our last uh, last execution right so that's keeping that idea in mind let's uh, go ahead and write the logic for throttling so we need a function called uh, throttle and this function is going to take two parameters one is the callback function and the other is the limit okay so the limit is the x amount of time that i was talking about so uh, we'll be declaring a few variables over here uh, let's call timeout and another variable would be um, last run so so that we can track when was the last event catered okay and this is going to be a closure so we are going to return a function again okay now inside the function like i said the first thing that we need to do is immediately cater the first event so that's very easy to handle so we will do if not of last run which means if last run is undefined means it has never been catered no event has been catered yet so in that case we would cater the event and update our last run with the current date time which would be date dot now all right so now the else part is going to be a little tricky but i'll try to explain it as much as possible so uh, we for the subsequent events we'll be throttling those events and by throttling i mean we'll be pushing them inside the timeout and if the events are going on executing so if the events are going on reaching the else part we need to e also clear the timeout so that we are not uh, triggering the uh, we are not catering the unwanted events until the event has stopped okay so the idea is similar to debounce so we will just write clear timeout timeout and we will say timeout equal to set timeout and inside the set timeout we are going to write um, okay so i'll come back to the timeout part and inside our set timeout we are going to cater the event by executing the callback and we are also going to update our last run time equal to um, date dot now again okay now coming to the the hacky part that i was talking about so here we are going to write the timeout time equal to limit minus date dot now minus uh, last run time okay so let's try to understand why we are doing this so let's assume that limit is 500 and date dot now is 1200 and last run is 1000 okay so in that case it the date dot now minus last run is going to be 200 milliseconds and the delta limit minus uh, 200 milliseconds which would be 500 minus 200 milliseconds is going to be 300 milliseconds so our callback the set timeout callback is going to wait for 300 milliseconds before it reaches the callback queue and then to the call stack okay so the people who don't know what i'm talking about i'm talking about the event loop so uh, i'll be linking the video in the suggestion box so if you don't know about the event loop just click on that and visit uh, that video and understand what is event loop so uh, coming back to 
what i was saying so this callback is going to uh, wait for 300 milliseconds before it reaches to the callback queue and then to the call stack so what we are essentially making sure is uh, by the time this callback function reaches the call stack our date dot now minus last run so it has waited 300 milliseconds so when it reaches the call stack the date dot now at that point would be 1500 milliseconds and uh, this logic over here so let's uh, do a console log on um, date dot now minus last run greater than equal greater than or equal to um, this is going to be limit okay so what what this expression is basically saying is uh, the date dot now minus last run is always uh, is should should be greater than the limit only then we are going to uh, execute so if i put this in a if condition it would be saying that the delta between the date dot now and the last run if it is greater than or equal to the limit only then we are going to execute that function right so according to my assumption i think that this is always going to be true why because we are making sure that we are waiting for this delta in the callback queue right so we are making we are basically finding the delta that is remaining after this subtraction and we are making our timeout wait for that much time so obviously by the time it reaches the callback uh, but by, by the time it reaches the call stack the date dot now minus last run is basically always going to be equal greater than or equal to the limit hence this is always going to be true and we wouldn't need to throttle anything it will get throttled automatically because uh, we are already doing a clear timeout for the rest of the events so the only event that is going to come to till this stage is the last event and the last event we don't need to check this condition because uh, it is always going to be true and uh, our uh, throttling would work out of the box by just doing the clear timeout and uh, set timeout so let's uh, execute and see if my assumption is correct or not and uh, then we, we will uh, talk further so let's uh, update our event listener to call throttle and inside the throttle we are now going to pass in our function which is this okay and the limit so the limit is going to be um, let's say 500 milliseconds like whatever I explained in the example so let's execute this see what this is printing and then we will uh, come back and talk more about this so I hit a refresh and I resize and you can see it is always going to print true okay so our throttling is working fine now so at each resize that i'm doing there are a lot of events getting triggered but all of them are getting throttled and only after 500 milliseconds we are basically executing our uh, uh, callback function basically catering the event like i was saying right and hence you are seeing a small delay in the uh, resize of the search box right so before throttle it was very smooth it was happening uh, uh, automatically and immediately whenever i was resizing but now it is waiting for a bit it is uh, ignoring a few events and only after 500 milliseconds it is basically letting my event to be catered okay now the question comes is uh, why are we removing our smooth experience and coming to this experience where it is giving us light delay in adjusting the size of our search box so a very simple ex simple reason is this operation that i'm performing is very small operation and if you don't throttle this it would be fine it is okay to not throttle this uh, small calculation but imagine a scenario when you are working with uh, uh, bigger libraries like 3js d3js and all these things so d3js let's say it has plotted a very big map and whenever i resize it has to update the map according to the or resize the map according to the uh, screen width so the way the these uh, maps or d3js maps are created they are uh, they are working with very very small pixels and each of those pixels will have to be resized to 
basically resize the entire map right so that that operation is a quite a heavy operation so if we don't throttle those kind of operations we will end up uh, consuming a lot of ram so in that in those kind of scenarios we'll be using throttle a lot this is just for an example uh, you uh, basically don't need to do it for this kind of operation so this is basically just to make you understand that uh, when you throttle how the behavior changes and uh, what would happen okay uh, for the safe side if you want uh, you you can put this inside the if condition so this will make sure that we only execute the event after the uh, throttle period has passed right so according to my calculations i don't think this condition is required but for the safe side you can keep it that will not make any difference uh, so let's go to the browser and hit a refresh and it executes the same way there is no difference in the way it was executing okay so that's all for this one guys i hope it was uh, useful for you to understand what is debounce and throttle if you have any questions drop a comment in the comment section also let me know what are what will be the use cases of these debounce and throttles so apart from what i have shown in this video what do you think where else we can use debounce and throttle it would be interesting uh, thing to know also uh, like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more such videos on interesting concepts of javascript and hit the notification bell to get notified about my videos whenever I upload them. So see you in the next one. Bye.